Denise with Artist Her Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just, so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart Paint Party. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. All right, you guys, today we are going to create the Enchanted Rose from Beauty and the Beast. Are you familiar with Beauty and the Beast? One of my favorite classic Disney movies, books, animations, whatever you want to call it. So it's pretty popular. I thought it would be a really pretty project for today. You can make it into a gift for someone. You can make it into a card. You can do whatever you want to with it. Uh, so we're going to draw step by step. I always start with um, black marker and white paper to sketch it out, but I want you guys to use pencil. I'm only using marker so you can see it better on the camera. So use a pencil so you can erase it. Hey, Reagan. All right, I hope you guys are doing awesome. And again, so the way my format is vertical. So my paper is uh, in portrait mode, right? If you, it's portrait or vertical, because I'm gonna do a long vase with a uh, rose inside of it. So we're doing the enchanted, hey! And you know, here's our, you're our Disney expert, Reagan. Reagan just got back from Disney, right? Day, Reagan's there a lot with her family, which is so fun. And I love seeing, oh, I should have worn my Mickey ear. Reagan even sent me some art stuff from Disney. So she sent me some really cool Mickey ears. Sorry, Reagan. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm Bella. Hi, you guys. Hey, anytime you guys want to come on camera early, feel free. I'm going to um, give you guys the link today early in case you guys want to come up early if you have any questions or you want to share. And I know last week, I know the kids love when everybody comes on at one time. So maybe we'll do that again today. So you'll get the link early. Okay. But let's start sketching and then we'll talk some more in a minute. So again, my format, right, is vertical here. And I'm going to start with a vertical line. And I'm going to arch it over like this. This is the glass. And I'm going to do a slight curve here to make it look like the handle's going to go there. And then I'm going to arch it and I'm going to do a vertical line down. So I went farther on this side and I came out a little bit. So I can go farther and out a little bit on that side. Is it, it almost looks like a bell, right? Bell, bell, like bell from Beauty and the Beast. So it does look like a bell shape though. Now I'm going to arch the bottom, curve it to make it look dimensional. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to curve it out and go back. Doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. And then this is going to be the top. Curve, curve, oval little knob. We'll put a circle here. There. It's like the little thing that you pick it up with. I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what the name is. Now, to make it look like it's sitting on the table, we're going to do a horizontal line on one side, and then we're going to skip this part and then finish the horizontal line there. Okay. And yours does not have to look like mine. Yours can look like yours, right? Now I'm going to sketch out my rows. Let's start, let's start with this stem. So I'm going to do a wavy vertical line this time. And another wavy. And then this is the top part, like with the leaves. And I could add some leaves here. 
You don't have to keep up with me. Take your time. Okay, I'm going to start with the outside of the rows. Then I'll work my way in with the petals, okay? So I'm going to do here. So you guys, if you see the comments, so Jim Fuse, he's my producer. I have a producer. <laughs> Jim Fuse is behind the scenes helping me out today. And guess, and guess what? Over on uh, Amazon, we have Aaron watching from Ireland. And Aaron says, if you ever run out of space for all the art and producers, feel free to send them my way and I'll gladly take them off your hands. Ha, ha. <laughs> and Aaron, Aaron started following and so did Just Me. And also we have Kiro over on uh, Amazon. So I wanted to say hello to everyone there. So and also uh, for those of you in the group, I did uh, give you guys the link to join backstage and uh, also make sure I, I put another post for those of you uh, in the Facebook group. You can give permission to StreamYard so we can see your names if you want us to share that to the screen so it doesn't just say Facebook user. But uh, yeah, this is this is fun. This is a uh, this was one of my daughter's favorite movies when they were growing up. Of course, Aww. They're, they're older. so Yeah, one of my favorites, too. I used to watch it with my little nephew, Richie, and he would get so scared. He, and then when he was in high school, he played the beast. Oh, my gosh. And now he's actually just graduated from college. And, oh, I got to have to tell him to watch this. This was one of his favorite movies when we were grow when he was growing up and I was already grown up. So, uh, you guys... I have my um, members in the membership group. So they were all um, popping on, saying hi, and they're gonna come on the camera and share their amazing artwork. They've been with me. Some of them have been with me for over a year. Some of them are new, so I'm super excited. And if you're not sure what Jim was talking about, it'll say StreamYard um, grant permission. So StreamYard is the platform that I use to stream to various places. And um, right now we're streaming to uh, the the members group so that you guys can watch, learn, and come on camera if you want to. Or if you're watching it recorded, hey, you guys, you got to come live one day. Live is where it's at, and we have so much fun. So let's finish our rows here. And so, again, I'm just making it look. D Denise, I, I do have to say, though, I have to disagree with you on something. You said, okay, you go said, ahead. That, you said that you've grown up. Well, anyone that does art for a living doesn't sound like they've grown up to me that they're still enjoying life. So. You know what? You're so right. I, I have, to, you're right. I'm a big kid. I'm a big kid. And um, that's probably why I love doing all these Disney cartoons and projects that are super fun because I am a big kid, but yeah, when I was a kid, really literally a little kid i grew up on captain kangaroo and romper room of course sesame street thank goodness um oh my gosh you know mr rogers all the classics that's what i grew up with and um but of course i can't even remember cinderella snow white the classics I, I don't even remember the first real huge blockbuster Disney movie until Little Mermaid when they kind of came back. And that was, sorry, you guys, that's my absolute favorite. So then Beauty and the Beast is next. So how's your rose coming, you guys? Your enchanted rose. Oh, let's put some. So to give this the illusion that it's dimensional, we're going to put a few more lines in here. Right. Okay. We're going to do. Oh, I meant to. That's all right. One day we're going to do just a Jackson Pollock project. So Jackson Pollock was an artist from the United States who loved to splatter and sprinkle paint. Okay. Now it's great to do outside. So I'm going to say once it gets more into midsummer, we'll do a Jackson Pollock project today. We're going to do pretty neat. So you guys don't get paint everywhere. That's why I was in the supply list, I did put watercolor paint. You can also use watered down acrylic paint if you want that splattered look. So if you guys trace this out already, you guys, so I'm using the canvas paper. So I just taped it on this board so you guys can look at it upright. But what I wanna do is get that sprinkled paint effect, but I wanna show you other 
ways you could do the background. So Jim, I put some photos up there of other roses in different ways you guys could do with the background. Okay, so that one looks like stained glass, right? Just like at the castle when um, they show the stained glass, isn't that pretty? So you don't even have to do the glass container. You can do it all broken up with a blue background, like stained glass. That would be a great way with like some black outlines. There's another one. So you could, again, color the inside of the glass blue, and then it looks like the sun's, um, like, you know, beaming down from the top, and then it's sparkling like the rose is coming back to life. Mm, remember that scene? That's a pretty one, too. Another version where you can do the, so these are all the ones without the splattered paint, right? So you could do a pretty purple background, maybe a white table that looks like white and gray marble. And then the inside of the base is just slightly lighter. Okay. And then you could put, we'll do like little white dots to make it look like it's sparkling later. You would put the little details on later. So you always want to start with the background and work your way forward for this project. Okay, so this is going to be the fun part. And you guys, high tech today. We're going to do double camera. So I'm going to try my best. And those of you guys that know me, I'm a little challenged here. But I'm going to give it a whirl. So Jim, can you put my other camera up? All right. Jim was also telling me about lighting, you guys. I'm going to work on the lighting, too. So here's, this is plate as my acrylic paint. Okay, you see how thick it is. And it's opaque. That means you can't see through it. Here's my Crayola watercolor paint. Now, you could get the same effect by watering down your acrylic. So if you want to splatter paint, acrylic paint's not really going to splatter because it's too thick. Watercolor paint or watered down acrylic. But I'm going to use my watercolor paint. And I want my background to be blue and purple so it looks black on the camera. But you guys, this is purple and this is blue. And I got the green wet, but I'm not going to do the green. So I'm going to wet my brush for this one. I'm going to take a little bit of the purple. Hopefully it doesn't look brown. Oh, there it looks purple. Okay, ready? Now watch this because I want to be neat today. So I'm going to tap, 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 tap. It still looks black. I'm going to I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Okay, so if, it's, if yours is not sprinkling or you don't want to do this, don't do it. Okay, look, I added more water, and you can see it's, it's lighter purple now, right? It's more transparent. If I want this purple to get lighter, I could just take some water, watch, and just tap it. So now I'm watering it down right on my paper. Now this paper, you guys, is the canvas pad paper. It's thicker than the computer paper, so it won't uh, buckle or ripple or whatever you want to say. And I did actually, here, I'm going to show you guys this. I accidentally, this is from the com, um, computer paper. I already traced one out. This is the watercolor paint. Do you see how I got the little ripple in it? So this is a lightweight paper from printing, right? And I was practicing on it. So you guys can use it, but I'm going to warn you that it, you're going to get a little bit of a, you know, like a, you know, you're going to get texture or wave to it. Where if you're using the canvas paper, it's made for watercolor and acrylic paint. Your printer paper is not made for that. So I just wanted to show you what will happen if you're using that. Okay, but isn't this fun? All right, and if you're not splattering, that's okay. We'll do a whole nother Jackson Pollock project another day. But it is fun. All right, so I'm sprinkling. So I'm getting water and tap, tap, tap. I'm just, look at, tap, tap, tap my brush, tap, tap. Now let's put some blue in there. So I'm going to dip my blue. Tap, tap, tap. All right. So I just got to look. That's a mistake. Only you guys. It's a secret. Shh, I'm going to fix it. No one knows it's a mistake but you. Don't tell anybody. Yes, I make mistakes. Oh, my gosh. But you know what I'm going to do? It's a happy little accident. You know who would say that? Bob Ross, happy little accent. Look, I'm just going to paint over it, and no one's going to know. All right. Now, notice I got paint. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Lola. Lola, You guys, Lola had a great idea. She said you could put real petals for the rose. That would be cool, too. It could be a multimedia, mixed media collage, and you can actually add 
real rose petals. That would be cool. I would shellac them with like some Mod Podge. Um, so what's going to happen as they dry is they're going to get uh, like crumply. You know, if you've ever kept a rose for a long time, you can press it in between like plastic, but I would put some Mod Podge on it and then it won't get crunchy. I don't know the right word for it. But that's a great idea, Lola. I like how you're thinking outside the box. Okay, now you guys sprinkle as much as you want, wherever you want, because it's fun. I'm going to put a little bit more purple over here. Okay. Now, this is a little bit wet, right? So we got to let it dry. I'm actually liking don't you like this part here? Look at happy little accident. Do you see that that accident, I covered it with more sprinkles and now I actually like it better. I'm going to put some purple over there. And that means since I like it better, I'm going to have to put some more paint on here. So you guys know it's going to take a little bit of time to dry. So we'll try a couple other techniques while this is drying. Are you guys liking this up close high tech camera here? All right. So now I'm going to let you get, you think that's enough paint or you think I should have more? Cause you know, I could do this all day. It's very fun and relaxing. You guys are probably having fun too. Notice I drew it first, right? Cause this is going to take a while to dry and you can see it buckled a little bit. It's not quite as flat as it was, but that's because it's pretty wet right now because I sprinkled a lot on it. What can, you can do is you guys, once it's dry, if it's still in your sketchbook, you can just close it and the pressure from the pages will make it flat again. Or you can press it once it's dry, like in between a book, in between your Beauty and the Beast book and your Ariel Little Mermaid book, right? All right, so that looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna leave it now. I still, you guys, I'm still liking this. Now, you know what? I'm gonna have to add more paint over here. Give it a, I like the big mistake. <laughs> Isn't that funny? See, now it's even wetter, right? Let's see what it looks like on the top. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it now. Okay, now I'm gonna set this aside. I'll show you. Okay, so this was my practice one. All right, where am I going to put this? I need a bigger art studio. Okay. This one, you guys. Ooh, okay. There goes my high tech. My high tech studio here, you guys. All right. This one, you guys, I did with marker. So I want to show you all the different supplies you can use today. This one is done with marker. All right, and that doesn't mean, but look at how neat it is. So I used my Sharpie oil-based marker on the paper because it's extremely opaque, which means you can't see through it. And the and same thing with this one. So this is all marker. That's why I was so neat, okay? I don't paint that neat. You guys know that have been with me this long. My painting does not come out that nice. So I used this one with marker just to show you how neat it could be. And I want to show you guys, and again, a lot of you are extremely, extremely neat painters. You guys know I'm not. So here you can use markers. I want to show you guys what it would look like if you colored in some with colored pencil. These are the days when I'm feeling like, oh, I need to be neater or, oh, maybe I should try colored pencil. Now you guys can shade in your glass here. I'm just using a black and I'm going really, really light. And I'm following the line of the glass holder. Here. All 
And then you would want to leave some areas white to make it look like glass so it's reflecting, right? Or like I showed you guys the ones that were purple, you could use purple. And again, and following the line of the glass, So I don't want to color this horizontal. And I'm trying to move this back under the camera. Because, you know, this high tech studio I got going here. You guys, really, one day I'm going to have a real art studio with fancy lighting and cameras. And I have my producer. <laughs> now, maybe I want to do a blue background. Again, this is up to you guys. So there's colored pencil. The colored pencil, you guys, is going to take a little bit longer. It's a nice way to spend your afternoon coloring, taking your time. So that would be, again, a colored pencil look. You guys, these paint sticks, we all know we love these, right? They're all in my box. I should have taken them out. But these, the only thing with these for this project is you guys don't they don't have a fine tip right so they're pretty wide tipped and so it's harder and you guys again, I'm just gonna do a little bit see how opaque that is you just have to take your time I find it's a little bit more challenging to use the paint markers because of the wide tip so that's why I liked the sharpie markers it's still pretty. These colors are really pretty in these paint markers and they're opaque, which means you can't see through them. But again, because of the tip, you have I'm using it from the angle. So I'm using it from the side, but the colors are fantastic. And again, it's opaque, which means you can't see through it. So use it more. If you're using these, use it from the side and go slow. Okay. So those are, and again, my other one that I'm going to work on is going to, it's drying so I can paint it in because I already got some acrylic paint, but I want to show you guys. Oh, let me show you one more thing here. All right. Now, here's something else. If you guys have black construction paper, actually, this is, this is one of my journals, but I love these. Okay. If you haven't tried these, they look, these work amazing on black. So let's get my green out. The colors are a little bit different, but I want to try our rose on here. So I'm going to start with the stem. This is just a crayon. Isn't that crazy? I love that. That's, so this is Construction Paper Crayons by Crayola. This is a green. Okay, so this is my sketchbook. This is one of my sketchbooks. But I just wanted to show you guys how this works really nice if you're looking for a different version. If you want it to be on black paper or tag board or construction paper, you can even do it on color. And it, so how Lola had said you guys could use real rose petals, which again is a great idea. But what you could also do is maybe cut out rose petals from construction paper and make it, you could fold it and make it dimensional. All right, let's see what happens. So there's the green, right? Isn't that cool? Let's get rid of that. This will be the top part. Once upon a time, I knew the parts of a flower. I bet you guys know. Go ahead. I know you studied that in school. What, like, one of these is a stamen. What is this part called? This part that connects to the flower, right? I know these are leaves. This is the stem.
So Lola wants to know if she should use the big brush or the small brush. For the sprinkling Lola, I would start, at, this is what I used. Can you see, oops, let me hold you this. So this is, look at my finger. It's about a little bit smaller than my finger. So if that's for sprinkling, just use something, I would consider this a small brush and wet it for sprinkling. If you're painting it in Lola, I would use, so you guys, this is called a, this is called a flat paintbrush, and this one's called a round paintbrush. So Lola, for this project, I'm using, I just want you guys to, to see, roughly, this is great just to outline. You can use it to paint in. It depends on how large you're working today, but I am using smaller brushes today because I'm working smaller. Okay, so now let's try, so that was the green in the construction paper on black. And now I just want to show you guys, this is um, the rose color. And it look, it colors right over black. Is that crazy? Oh my gosh, that's why I love these things. So I love these, just like you guys know, I love oil pastels, right? Oil pastels are messy and love oil pastels. They smudge and they get under your fingernails. They're really fun to use as long as you're okay with being messy and you got to make sure you get all the little pieces not in the carpeting or on the tile floor. These don't, have, this is just a crayon, a crayon that, a magic crayon, right? It colors so nice. So I always had a class pack of these in my classroom. So I would color it first and then like add all my little details for my petals later. So these are Crayola construction paper crayons. And you can see on the box, you can use any color, right? You don't have to use black, although black looks really cool. And you can add the petals on the ground if you want to. Put some petals like they fall off. So I didn't even sketch this out, you guys. This one I just drew. I'm going to put a little bit more red right here. Now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with the white crayon because that's really fun. You can, again, make it look like it's sparkling. These little sparkling little plus signs. You can add just little dots, like glitter dots. Oh, use a crayon. I can actually add some white here to the tips of my petals. See if you like it. If not, we can color over it. All right. Oh, this one, I love this color too. So this is a, let's do the vase in this color. So you wanna put a vase on this one? Okay, let's try. I'm gonna go right through that star. I'm gonna do, how awesome is this color? Can you guys tell it's like a, a turquoise blue? I really like that color. That's a really cool color. Of course, I'm a guy, right? Guys like the blue stuff. <laughs> well, we have to include the men, the boys, the men. We have boys that create with us all the time. So, yes, blue. Not that I want to stereotype, but, you know. Girls love blue, too. This is just a really cool turquoise. And there's no, not even a name on it. It's just... A cool color. I 
I'm just going to go right through my sparkles. And if you want, you guys can put like the little arch at the bottom here. If you want to add that. And I could put, you know, again, some like reflection lines in here. Notice they're vertical. You can always color it if you want to color it. I'm not going to. I just, I want to inspire you, give you some ideas. But I just, oh, let's try yellow too. Let me show you yellow. And then we'll, we're going to move on. Tell me how you guys are doing. Right, let's put some yellow sparkles. Isn't yellow cool too? So you guys, look at, they don't smudge, okay? They don't come on your hands. There's nothing on my fingernails. These, we have to start doing more projects with these crayons. They're one of my favorites. I've had a lot of moms say to me, I didn't know those existed, but they do. Okay, let's do a purple, just so you can see. Actually, let's do the table purple here. So I'm gonna do a horizontal line here, horizontal, and we'll do the table purple. Purple is my favorite color. Okay, now I have a, now I have a new journal cover. And you can even add a little purple inside here. This is inside the vase. You can outline your flower. Oh, I think there's a I know there's a gray. I don't know if, I don't think there's a black, but there is a gray. All right. Maybe do little. You get the idea. Okay, that's this, you guys. Those are awesome. All right, so you can do your flowers, markers, crayons, color pencils. I showed you that my watercolor paint, you guys, is still drying. Let's check on it. Okay, it's still a little bit wet, so I'm going to come back to this because I want to paint this in, but I'm going to give it a little bit longer to dry. If you guys have a blow dryer, you can always blow dry it. But I'm just going to set mine aside because I want to show you one more thing. All right, so, hey Jim, can you put the other camera on for a sec? Now I gotta find where I put it. All right, you guys, I always taught this when, to the kids in school. And I was thinking about all the different ways you could create this project. And one of my favorite, and Lola got kicked it right off, like adding actual rose petals. One thing that I never taught you guys that I did all the time with teaching was making paper quilling. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but you make little paper, almost like beads. And they're so fun. And this is a great thing to do, even when you're sitting around kind of bored or just you want something to fiddle with. So pick your favorite colors. And you need construction paper or um, you can use tag board, but for the actual quilling part, you need a thinner paper about the weight. Yes, we can read. I got a book here, Lola. We'll read a book too. So these are um, strips of paper. You can hand cut these or use a paper cutter. So I used a paper cutter. These are um, a half inch thick, like wide, and I made it long. So I used eight and a half by 11 color paper and I cut them into strips, a half inch, right? This is what you do. If you guys, so I was thinking real quick, I'll glue them on like a stem and show you how to do it. But look at these, I have a whole plate of them here. So I was doing it this this morning. So these are called paper quills and they're like little beads. Kids have made necklaces out of them. So there's the hole in the middle, but you make it into an artwork. So you, I'm gonna show you, you roll it on a pencil. So let's just say I'm making, I'm just showing you on my plate real quick. And you could make paper quill flowers or a rainbow. We'll do one project one day that's just paper quilling. But I'm just telling you guys, it takes a while to roll these. That's why I started it this morning. So let me show you how to do it because this is another way you could do your flower. Your, or it doesn't even, again, it doesn't have to be a flower. So you need a pencil. And I've already cut my strips, right? And you need a glue stick. 
You can use liquid glue, but you guys, I get it on my fingers and then my fingers get stuck to my paper. I'm much neater with um, glue stick. I happen to love the Scotch glue stick because it, it, it works really well. It's strong. But you can use Elmer's or whatever you have, even if you have liquid. So you take your pencil and your paper and you wrap it around. Your I'm using a color pencil because I have it, but any kind of pencil. And I'm wrapping it. So this takes a lot of fine motor. If yours pops open, don't get mad, okay? If it comes off of your pencil, try it again. It takes a little bit of practice. Let me use a different color pencil you can see. I'm gonna use a green pencil. So here, you might be able to see it better. So I'm gonna take my pencil and my paper and I'm just gonna start at the end and go slow. Wrap, wrap, wrap. And you're gonna go all the way till your paper is almost gone. So I keep wrapping it and wrapping it and wrapping it. All, that's why I'm not gonna do this for an hour on here with you guys. I just wanna teach you another technique. So see at the end, I have this little baby piece. You guys just take a little bit of glue here and glue the end. Don't glue it to your pencil. Just close it and hold it for like 10 seconds, okay? So I'm just close, and then you slide it off Push it back together if it comes apart. Slide it off. Now I got a paper quill. You see that? Okay. This would be like the, the petals. I would make it into a shape of the flower, and I'm going to show you that later. So if you have construction paper, just cut them into about half-inch strips with scissors, or you can use a paper cutter if you have one, or have someone cut it for you. Really a fun project. So, again, I cut enough for stem and for Piles. Okay. So Lola, how are you guys coming on your project so far? Lola wants me to read Beauty and the Beast. I got a couple of Beauty and the Beast books. So, right, the classic. You guys tell me if you want me to move on. Oh, this is long. <laughs> All right. Once upon a time, there lived a young prince in a beautiful castle. Although he had everything in his heart desired, the prince was spoiled and selfish. We don't know anybody like that, do we? I don't. One winter's night, an old beggar woman asked the prince for shelter from the cold. In return, she offered him a rose. Repulsed by the old woman, the unkind prince turned her away. The woman warned him not to be deceived by appearances, since beauty is found within. When the prince dismissed her again, the old woman's ugliness melted away to reveal a beautiful enchantress. The prince tried to apologize, but it was too late. The enchantress knew there was no love in his heart. So look at the stained glass, right? You guys can do an artwork like the stained glass. As punishment, the enchantress turned the prince into a hideous beast. Then she placed a spell on the castle and all who lived there. The rose she had offered him was an enchanted rose. It would bloom until the prince was 21. If he could learn to love and be loved in return before the last petal fall, petal fall sorry you guys, <laughs> then the spell would be broken. If not, he would remain a beast forever. Ashamed of his monstrous form, the beast hid inside the castle. A magic mirror was his only window to the outside world. As the years passed, he fell into despair. Slowly, the rose began to wither. He did not believe anyone could ever love him. Aw, poor beast. Don't you feel sorry for him? <laughs> Yes, you're right. And I'm going to guess that Susan, it does, Susan doesn't have a name on the stream yard, but so I can only see Facebook user, but I believe you just said that this is a great story because, you know, um, Belle loves books, right? That's one of Belle's favorite things to do is read books. Plus it really teaches you about accepting others. So how about Gaston over on that Gaston page? 
In a nearby village, there lived a beautiful young woman named Belle. Belle, unlike the other girls in the village, cared for only her books. She always felt out of place. Belle loved to read about adventure and romance. Her father, Maurice, loved books too. Maurice was an inventor, a genius, according to Belle, a crackpot, according to the town folk. Belle is even stranger than her father, the villagers whispered. Her nose is always in a book and her head is in the clouds. Gaston, the handsomest man in town, wanted to make Belle his wife, even though she thought he was a brainless brute and turned him down again and again. Gaston was determined to wed the lovely Belle. What's the name of the middle of the rose? I don't know. Wait, is that is that what the um, piston is? The middle of the rose? Someone's answering the question. So you guys got to tell me again. I used to be able to label all the parts of a flower, but I forgot. One cold day, Maurice hitched his horse, Philip, to a wagon and set off to show his latest invention at a fair away at a fair. But Maurice read the map wrong and became lost in a forest. As an icy wind whistled through the trees, he suddenly heard the howling of wolves. Philip bolted and Maurice fell to the ground, trying to escape the wolves. The frightened man ran deeper and deeper into the woods. He came to a castle and stumbled inside. There he was greeted by Mrs. Potts, the teapot, Cogsworth, the clock, Lemire, the candelabra, who had been servants to the prince. But before he had time to marvel over these strange creatures, even stranger one appeared, the beast. When Maurice stared in horror, the beast howled angrily. Then he scooped Maurice up and carried him to a dungeon. Meanwhile, Philip had made his way back home. Belle took one look at the riderless horse and knew something awful happened to her father. Philip, take me to him, she cried, leaping into the horse's saddle. Without a pause, Philip thundered off toward the woods. When they reached the castle, Belle burst inside and searched frantically for her father. The enchanted objects led her to the dungeon, but just as she found Maurice, the beast appeared. Belle let out a terrified gasp at the sight of the hideous creature. She begged the beast to free her father. When he refused, she bravely offered to take Maurice's place. No, Belle, cried Maurice, but the beast agreed to the exchange. Okay, let's take a break. It's hard for me to look sideways like that. Woo! All right, you guys, let's go back to creating. Okay, so we have, I have my plain one here. I have my wet one off to the side. I'm letting dry. So how about if I just start, I can start painting this one. So I'm going to use acrylic paint on this one. So I have my little styrofoam plate. I have white, red, blue, green. Okay, I'm going to start with the red. And yes, I'm still using a small round brush if I could find it. I lost it after I showed Lola. Oh, it's in the water. Imagine that. <laughs> Sometimes when I put things where they belong, I forget. Okay. So I have red acrylic paint. You don't want to water it down, right? Because you want it to be thick and opaque. That means not see-through. Can you come on? Yes, Lola, do you see the link? You guys can come on whenever you want. Tell me what you're doing. The link's there whenever you're ready. Oops. So do you see how covering this acrylic paint is? And I'm just going to paint right over my lines and I can re-outline it later. So you guys, um, make sure you turn your volume down on Facebook, not on your computer. Lola's here. And Lola can come on whenever she's ready. Hi, so I just wanted to show you. That looks great. I love the yellow. And, um, and I wanted to show you this too. Let me see if it's not watery. Okay, look. Is that real? 
Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like at the perfect place. I wish it would stay like that forever. Yeah. Oh, you have, you have the bell necklace on. Yeah, the bell necklace. And I wanted to tell you if um, today that we celebrate because I'm from a different country, we celebrate this um, thing um, that's called Cinco de Mayo. Now we have um, food and we celebrate. Tell me about it. I want to. Um, we celebrate here um, in America at this and Washington at this time. But I don't know if today's the day or I don't know when they celebrated. So my mom said it's today. And we we eat and for me I have to I have a tradition that I put my dog a little hat and I put him on a guitar for he can sing. But since he's too old, he can't do that right now. So you have a, an older dog and a puppy? Yeah. My puppy doesn't like to get dressed. It is, I already tried him the hat to see if he likes it, but he's going to destroy it, so no. So for Cinco de Mayo, what kind of food do you eat? Well, for Cinco de Mayo, we eat like tacos maybe with guacamole and with chips where we can dip it in and maybe uh, some lemonade. And I think for dessert, we can have like chocolate cake or something. Wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Can I come over? Yeah, um, I guess. Um, I'm a country, Lola. And are we going to draw anything for Mother's Day? So I thought we could use this for Mother's Day. What do you think? Mm, well, okay. I don't you, know. Oh, I thought you could just make a rose for Mother's Day. You could write a poem with the rose for Mother's Day or a card. I loved your idea. I wouldn't, don't pluck petals off that beautiful rose. You can use them once they start falling off, but it's too pretty. So yeah. I, that's what I was thinking for Mother's, because do you know Mother's Day is coming, right? Yes. Yeah. So, or you can go back and watch one of the other videos. Yeah, my my mom wants me to celebrate her on Sunday and on Monday. Mother's Day is every day, Lola. You should uh, be right? mothers work really hard. So you should make your breakfast in bed. Clean yeah, I don't know how to make eggs yet, but I didn't know how to make toast and maybe coffee for them. Oh, that would be great. Toast and toast your coffee. Yeah. And you're also and um, what's our next um, art? Do you know that next week Emily's going to go water for Oh, I don't know if I'm not that good at that. You know what? I'm going to put some printables in the group. So you can use them. And can you print like a little um, animate kid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with little cat ears, that will be cute. I'll, I'll put samples and principles in the group, and then Emma will teach us. Oh, okay. All right. See you later. Have a great See you later. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, it's Cinco de Mayo. So, you guys, that's May 5th. And in Mexico, it is their. Uh, Freedom Day, such like when we celebrate uh, the 4th of July, Cinco de Mayo is their celebration for freedom. And they celebrate it May 5th, although I believe that the actual day was in September. And Lola and her family probably know that better than I do. But you know what? I'll eat Mexican for any reason, you guys. I'm definitely having Mexican tonight. You know how people say, what's your favorite food like that you couldn't live without? And that would be Mexican guacamole. I love good, fresh guacamole, fresh uh, salsa, and really thin chips. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah they actually, it originally, it was the battle of uh, the, the Mexican army beat the French at the Battle of Puebla on the 5th of May, and then it became, it's become more of a celebration of Mexican uh, culture. And so I, it's funny that people think that it's just like a big party when, you know, I mean, but I guess if you want a battle, right, you'd celebrate, so. Yeah, so the battle actually was on the 5th of May. Yes. Interesting, thank you for that. I'm glad to know that. Um, and 
I, the re, you know, I was like, oh, we could do a Cinco de Mayo artwork, but I did want to do something for moms. So I thought that this enchanted rose would be really pretty. You guys, again, it's really great to go with Beauty and the Beast, but now that you know how to do a rose and you have a variety of ways, you could do a watercolor, you color pencil, you could actually make a three-dimensional rose, right? You can use tag board or, um, and I'll go, I'm going to do a little bit more of the construction paper so you guys can make a card. But you guys, one, we have over 150 videos in the library vault so you guys can go back and do something. But I just thought that this rose would be a great Mother's Day, grandmother, aunt, whatever, and you can write a beautiful poem uh, to go with it. Right? So I think handmade gifts are great. Lola's been creating with us for over a year, since last March. Oh, and you know what? I should, I wonder if I have it here. Hold on, let me look in my closet. Oh, I think I put it in the other room. What Lola sent, you know who, what Lola sent me from Washington? You guys, it's so fun. Our members, I have to tell you, send me stuff. So all the time I get stuff in the mail and I like to send stuff back. But Lola sent me from Wash, from Amazon, a Chihuly book. And Dale Chihuly is a famous glass artist from Washington. So they sent me a beautiful Chihuly book from Washington on Amazon. And um, yeah, I'll show it to you guys another day. I think I put it on my bookshelf. It's not here. So I didn't get it dirty, right? All right. So this is the one without the splatter paint because I don't want to splatter the paint after because then I would get the splatter paint on my rose. So that's why I did it. Um, I just want to show you a different way to do this. And then the blue, I would do around my glass face. I love how Lola had the yellow. So you do not have to use the same colors that I'm using. So this is just blue for my background. And this is the acrylic paint. Susan makes cards all the time and sends them to people all over the place and I get random Postcards, handmade cards from Susan all the time. I love that. <gasps> Natasha, Sage, and Cora are here. The three sisters. Hey, girls. Hi. Hi. I do it. Let's see what you I'm doing. Lots, you I'm doing lots of glitter stuff right now, so that's why I'm on the floor. Okay. So I might be able to show you mine. I don't know. Can you? No. If I sit on there, maybe. No way. Curler beads. No yeah. way. I love those. I made little, five little tiny roses. So those were, again, one of my favorite, and I know this is in the Amazon carousel. That was another thing I always had in the art room for the kids to do. Kids love those. Do you know how good that is for fine motor? Because you have, right? You really have to pay attention to those little bitty beads and getting them on that star that you're doing. That, that was, oh, and I like your pattern. So those are the little roses. And then what is what color are you gonna put around it? Um, I'm not gonna do that because I'm just making like little roses for everybody in the family. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, so can you explain to people what that is? I know what they are, but I don't know if everybody watching does. So this is the container. It oh, usually that's a big container. Yeah, that's this is one of the big containers I have. And it comes with a lid. And it comes with these pattern thingies that you can put the beads on. They have little sticks. 
so that you can put the beads on them. And they come in different ones. So there's also a candy cane. So your square, the star, and there's, we have multiple circles, but that's the only one that I think we have multiple of. And then this is supposed to be a snowman. And they take a long time, don't they? Uh huh. But the candy cane leg is the one that you don't to take that long. And there's some beads in here that are just like multicolored. Oh, those are cool. Like there's red and white. There's also green, light green and dark green. And it's very rare if you see blue and white or pink and white. So those, and those are the ones that you need to melt with an iron, correct? Yes. Okay, so who does that? My mom. Okay. She has work right now because she was working from home, so she'll iron them later. And then after you iron them, you can actually take them off this and it will stick together. So, and I love that. And again, that's something that I always did in the classroom and the kids love doing them. It does require some fine motor, right? Because you got to put those little things on those little prongs and you have to be careful not to bump it. So like if a kid spent an hour doing that and then the kid next to them bumped into them and all the beads popped off, has that ever happened to you? Um, some once my mom like bumped off like half the beads on my thing and as a teacher you know the kids would line up for me to iron them and i've accidentally dropped one and i i want to cry because i'm like it took them an hour to make it right so you have to be really careful you do need an adult to iron it and it comes with wax paper so um so it comes with wax paper and the wax paper goes between the beads and the iron and the heat from the iron melts the plastic beads together and then it comes off of the prong. So that prong that she shows you, the orange prong is reusable. It's something you use over and over and over again. So you guys and all kids of all ages love it. I would not do it with kids under the age of five. They're very little beads. It's, it requires a lot of fine motor skills. And you have one already? You have one that's already mounted? Um, I, my mom, I don't know where they are, but. That's okay. Next we time. We do have one. So oh, and I found, I found some more. more. I found some more. Found a Christmas tree. And a heart. A heart would be good for Mother's Day, too, with, like, the letter M in it. That's cool, but I already made my card for Mother's Day. Got it. So I'll tell you something. After their iron, you could add a magnet to the back so that they could stick to things. You know what I mean? Like a little magnet. You that could, would be cool. Yeah. I mean, we used to make them into necklaces. So if you leave one of the holes empty in the middle, you could put a string through it for a for a necklace. One of my favorite projects. I'm so happy you guys shared that. Thank you. I also have a drawing. Gotta find it. From the middle line the glitter. I am. I have this dandelion in a pot. I love it. And I'm gonna add some things that Natasha's adding. She's adding hearts. She's adding their glitter. glitter. So hearts. they have double sticky sides, and they came with this kit. And it has a scoop. You pour the glitter into the spoon, then um, you sprinkle the glitter onto the shape. And when you want to switch glitters, you have to wash out the. Um, Ooh, look at all these container parts. And I do not recommend um, moving your paper up right side up until you have shaken all of the glitter off. Because it gets in the carpet, right? Uh huh. I just found out that we had these because they're in the set. These are little bead things. They're good for stringing for necklaces. Oh, that's nice. Those are pretty. Those look like pearl, kind of. Uh -huh. They're um, they look like pearls. They're flowers and little cans. 
it looks like. Okay, so if I finished mine, I've already shaken everything off. So here I made my rows. Um, I filled it in with pencil. Then um, I put the double-sided sticker stars on, and there was silver glitter. So I decided to use silver glitter. Then on this side, I love you. Oh. And um, I made a little heart. That's awesome. There's only red, um, blue, and silver that come with this set. And if you're really talented, you can um, get your things exactly on your mark without needing um, a spoon to proportion size. And I love the stickers that you used. That's so a great here's idea. the sticker sheet. Here's the sticker sheet. I have made a bracelet out of this stuff before, so. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Hey, do you guys want to stay in the green room down below? Don't go off camera, and then at the end, we'll all come on together again? Sure. All right, so just stay down there. We're going to bring up somebody else. Don't have to take it out. We'll bring you back later. Is that you guys? Hi, Ella. Ella and M. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Mama misprinted a little okay. bit. Yeah, yeah. misprinted the thing, but I don't think you can even we see it. Misprinted the good. name okay. on the. Yeah, you can't even see it. It's good. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So oh, your girl. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she says hello. Hi, Belle. <laughs> hello. And, and this then little she chip. Has little Oh, Chip, I love Chip. Um, so your work. Here's my rose. Hold on. Um, that looks really nice. Did you like sprinkling? Did you do, did you have fun sprinkling? It was so <laughs> That's awesome. And then you did the top yellow? She used some glitter. Yep, with glitter. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Came out fancy and sparkly. Oh, Mine doesn't look as good. <laughs> it still looks good. But yeah. Oh, it looks good. I like. I like it. I like the. Um, actually, I was going to do that next. Was my vase to make it look. So your blue. See how the blue got in the vase. I think that looks really good. I. I'm going to do that next. And then our mom also did this. No talking. And it, it looks really, really good. And was that lime colored paper? That's the black construction paper. It's I love it. So you're using black construction paper and acrylic paint? No, that was just Crayolas with a little bit of oil pastels on top. That's what the little. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that looks great. Thank you. And I, um, I, I, ha I can play a song from Beauty and the Beast on the violin um, if you want to hear it. Yes, yes. So I have a question. You want to hear a part or a like the whole thing? Whatever you want. Okay, because I practiced the whole thing. Okay. Um, where are you? And Emma's gonna sing, right? <laughs> no.
was great. <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. You guys stay on here because we're going to come. I'm going to bring everyone on at the end, okay? All right. Are you on the test? Okay. Uh, we'll get you back on in a couple minutes. Thank you. It was beautiful. I almost cried. Oh. Reagan's here. Hey, Megan. Hi. How's it going? Good. Back from Disney. Yes. Ooh, you splattered. It looks good. Yeah. Um, my dad painted one. Oh, that looks beautiful. That's a Mother's Day gift. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> with 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 some bling, you know. A nice diamond would go well with that painting. <laughs> Reagan, your splattering looks really cool too. So did you use watercolor for splatter? Yeah, I used these. Wow, a lot of colors. It looks really pretty. Thank you. So a couple minutes, we're gonna all come back on, okay? Okay. I know the kids love doing that, so I'll finish my paint. What's your favorite Disney movie? All right, you don't have to have any. What is it? Frozen. Frozen, yeah, frozen is good. All right, give me a couple minutes to finish up. Okay. And then come back on, pop back on, yeah. You guys are doing amazing. And the splattering is really fun, I'll tell you guys. So um, what I, again, would do is, now mine's dry, right? So splatter first, and oops, look at, it's about to drip. So obviously it's not dry in the whole place, but you get the idea. So let me, do I have tape here? Hold on. Let me see if I can, maybe I could just hold it. So what you would want to do then, once you get the background done, use acrylic to paint over it. Because if I use watercolor paint, it's going to be transparent. And then I'm going to see all those dots through it, right? Look at that. See? Watercolor paint is so easy because it's transparent. I couldn't do that with acrylic paint. So when I do go over this, I'm going to use acrylic to cover up all those dots. Let's see. I have green on my brush, so I'm just going to show you. Look, if I use the acrylic on top of the watercolor, it hides it. So then all those little dots are going to disappear. And I love how you guys think outside the box and come up with, again, perler beads. So you, she made a little baby rose for everyone in her family out of those perler beads. That's a great idea. You can also, you know, glue those onto a card, make it into a keychain. So do you see now how the acrylic, because it's opaque, covered up the watercolor paint? Let's see if I have another brush here to do my red. I love how Irina used the black paper so to use um, to do her flower with the pastels and the Crayola crayons. There's just no right or wrong way. It's just about experimenting and trying new things. And it, it can be scary at first. Actually, more for adults. I think the kids are the ones who are just so free and risk takers, right? They're willing to experiment and try and as adults, we're so afraid to make a mistake. But do you see now how my acrylic covered up the watercolor paint? And Emma was doing, I wanna show you guys, I loved how she was doing her vase, light blue, like a reflection. Are my kids still down there? You guys be patient. I want to bring you all on. And if you have your finished artwork, I want you to share it too. I love seeing you all on camera. 
together. Let's see if we got everybody. So if you're still watching and you want to come on, click on the link so you can come on with us. All right. So let's see. I'm going to take just some light blue here. And look, I'm going to paint right over again my splatters here. And then just following that line, the direction of my vase. So I added some white to my light blue and I'm using acrylic paint. And I got bumped into my red, so I'm gonna, I just made a mistake. You guys, I do it all the time, so I'm just gonna cover it. Look at that, cover. Bye-bye, mistake. I love that you guys were adding glitter. Glitter stickers, glitter, glitter. <laughs> yeah, so you should always shake off your glitter over something. You know what I like to do is save boxes and then use the box. I put my artwork inside the box and then use that so it doesn't get dirty everywhere. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the quilling. Uh, we could do a paper quilling project another day. So again, I bumped into the red. Do you see that little smudge? But look, no one knows but me and you. Look at it up close. Right? So you see that smudge that I just made? And look, I'm going to fix it. I'm just going to paint over it. And then how about if we do, what color do you guys want me to do? I can do the table after. Jim, you want to bring up everybody? I love seeing everybody on camera. Hey, look at you guys. Hi, everybody. This is C6. Hi, everybody. Hi, Yeah, I'm here. I love your pictures. I'm done with my picture. Let's see. Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh, they look great. Now, uh, Reagan, if yours is still dripping, don't go back down. Yeah, I kind of yours is still wet. See, see, I can see. All right, you guys did awesome. I'm going to be part of the group. What that goes by with me. Thanks for joining us. Bye. That was Bye. great. Bye. Oh, and this uh, is my full one. This is my full one. I love oh, it. Oh, wait. Oh, that yellow flower with the stars looks great. And the paper quilling. Do you guys see the paper quilling? Who's that? Um, that is, is that Bella? There you go. Um, Emma did that. Emma did. Yeah, Emma did. Look at that. Oh, that was the one project. No, no, no. We've already had it. Yeah. Um, you guys are awesome. Like, um, actually, uh, yeah, actually, keep it that already had all the papers so we only had to roll them up and you know glue them on. It's a little trickier than it looks, but it, it comes out really nicely. It looks beautiful. Lola, Denise, yes. Did you know that um you can use paper paper? Letting to make pencil people. No. You just throw the paper around the pencil, hold it in place like you would normally, but then you draw on them and yeah, maybe yeah. make skirts, crazy hair, longer or shorter strips, thinner or thicker. And very last one, what well, is this? I don't know how much. So then this is more of a serial pattern. What was your question? Yeah, um, I don't know if yesterday made um was May the fourth be with you or from Star Wars. What about it? Um, um are we gonna do an art for that? Baby Yoda. May the fourth be with you, you guys. Yesterday was Baby Yoda. Um, and we're gonna be going over more examples. So oh, um, I had school yesterday. I don't think I did it. That's a, it's, 
Do you have the app, Lola? Her app? Yeah, I have your app. So Baby Yoda's on there from May the 4th be with you. We did it last Okay. My dad said that this is actually the Star Wars week for some reason. I'm pretty sure um, on the 6th, oh. it's something instead of 6th, it's Sith or something. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm gonna have, I bet you Jim knows because I know he was doing something with the May the 4th be with you. I didn't know it had anything to do with the 6th. Yeah, so I think um, that my dad thinks that it's the entire week there's something um, involving Star Wars I'll look. every day. Yeah, I'll check into it. Did you guys do Baby Yoda yesterday? No, no we, we had school. So, um, but the day before like a year ago we did like uh, the baby yoda or something yeah I remember doing that a year ago so what would be really fun is to do it again and see how different it is from a year ago okay see if you got better because i hang all my artwork up in my room so i don't like trash it i just hang it up on the wall I'm starting yeah, to get we'll like forward, I'm starting to take it down and put it, on, and put it back up with frames instead awesome. of like, yeah. just the picture. Well, thanks, you guys. Make sure you share your pictures with me, okay? You can okay, post them on or message me or send them however you want. Okay. Make sure you clean up for your mouth. Is Irina talking to me now? I heard my name. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oh, oh <laughs> happy Mother's Day, Irina, to all the mothers. Rachel, make sure you tell your mom. Cora, Say, I got pain in my shoulders. Oh, that's my. Look at my. Look at this. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 So you got. So you guys. All right. So obviously, I didn't finish the project. Did I? Okay. Let me see how much is left. I didn't even finish the book. I'd rather finish the book than the project. What do you guys think? You know the end of the story, don't you? Do I have to get the book? You guys know the book. Watch the movie. You don't need me to read the end, do you? So look at acrylic, opaque, no splattering. Splattering, right? Splattering with acrylic paint over it or paint markers. What else? Where did I, do? I don't even know where I put my splattering. Oh, and then the paper quilling. You just saw the awesome paper quilling. Look, you don't even need me. The kids are so good at this stuff. It's amazing. So you guys, I love everything that you shared today. So much, you guys, it's like you were reading my mind, okay? We had Irina do the rose on black. We had the perler beads, which again, is my, one of my favorite activities, and the splattering. So if you don't know who Jackson Pollock is, look up Jackson Pollock. If you did splatter, Reagan, I know yours is really wet, wait for it to dry and then go over it with acrylic. Because if you use watercolor paint, you're gonna see all the little sprinkles through it, right? So use acrylic on top of the watercolor once it's dry. You guys, make sure you send me pictures. I can't wait to see these done. If you guys have any questions for me, email me, message me, text me, whatever it takes. Um, hey Jim, am I forgetting anything? No, I don't think so. Just uh, maybe a reminder to folks if you're if you're watching, uh, don't forget to follow Denise at her shop. And uh, yeah, we look forward to to the next lesson. And you can go actually go to Amazon and watch any of the past lessons as well if you haven't joined the subscription group yet. Yes, please follow me, you guys. I greatly appreciate it, and I greatly appreciate you guys watching me, and I thank Jim for working behind the scenes, and I thank all my members for coming on and sharing their brilliance. I have Lola. Lola, Cinco de Mayo, you enjoy all that homemade, uh, fresh Mexican food, and thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Denise Luca Carbonell, that's me. And Brenda, tell Brenda. Lola, tell Brenda happy Mother's Day, too. You guys, the best thing you could do for your mother is be kind 
and clean the house. Nothing better than a clean house. Clean your room and clean up your art mess, right? I have one big art mess here, especially those glitter people. If you have loose glitter, clean that mess up. Shake it up outside. And I don't know, just do something special. Do something fun. Write a poem. Talk about your favorite memories of your mom or the things that your mothers do that are so meaningful. I'm taking my mom out for a steak because that's what she wants. She wants to go for a steak on Sunday. So that's what I'm taking her to do. And I thought I'll, I'm going to have to talk her into it, but I thought maybe we would come on live together and um, say happy Mother's Day to everybody. So oh my God, Lola says maybe I can say that. You're so cute. Yeah, Lola, I would love that. Oh my gosh. I wish I lived closer to you. I live across the country. But happy Mother's Day. Yes, everybody. And happy Cinco de Mayo, too. So, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for creating. Thank you for thinking outside the Amazon box. And um, I'll see you guys again soon. All of our mothers have a blessed, beautiful week and celebrate Star Wars all week long. Now I got to Google that and find out if that's, I believe them, right? I believe. Why not celebrate all week long? So if you are a member, you guys check out the 150 videos that are in there. There's so many. You're going to find something for Mother's Day. You're going to find something for fireworks. You're going to find something for Cinco de Mayo. I can't remember what we did last year, but I know we did something. It was a combo Mother's Day Cinco de Mayo. So just check out the um, website and you'll find one of the videos. All right. Woohoo! That's all I got for today, you guys. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.